Hi everybody, this is another video about the carnivore diet. I posted a recent update about my two years and counting uh, being on a meat-based diet, uh, previously on a strict carnivore diet for a couple of months, um, and somebody posted a question on that video um, basically saying like, why are you not eating vegetables? Um, so uh, as per usual, nothing that I'm saying should be construed as medical advice, it's for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. Um, so the, the whole idea of the carnivore diet is to just eat um, basically animal flesh. Um, so whether that's you know beef, chicken, turkey, fish, um, eating their muscle meat, eating their organs. Um, and then a lot of folks do include eggs on the carnivore diet and also some also include dairy products, although a number of folks react negatively to dairy products. Um, well, in the form of um, milk and cheese and things like that. Um, butter is usually also included on the diet. A lot of folks don't react negatively to butter, butter although some do. Um, so basically just animal protein and, uh, or, or animal products I should say, uh, could certainly have animal fat like pork lard and um, beef tallow and, and chicken schmaltz is the is the chicken version of tallow or lard um, and um, and that's and that's pretty much it. insult um, usually is, is allowed on the diet so um, the the whole premise behind it to my understanding is that when one is eating a um, carnivore diet um, a it's very very nutrient dense um, so just you know, meat protein is, uh, or, or meat uh, animal products are very dense in protein. If you look at the amount of, say, almonds or uh, beans or um, uh, soy, well, soy is a bean, uh, or seeds or whatnot that you need to consume, like say, to get 20 grams of protein out of those sources versus, say, 20 grams of protein in an animal source, um, you can see that the amount is a lot denser, like if you need a much smaller volume because uh, animal products are so dense in protein, especially the muscle meat. Um, so it's a very nutritionally dense diet. Um, and then also a diet, a carnivore diet is also free of all of the quote unquote plant toxins that are present in various plants. So I just have to close my laptop. I've had the question up and I can see myself in my peripheral vision because my video is playing and oh man, very distracting. Okay, much, much better. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and I'm saying plant toxins in quotes because that's what they're referred to as and that is literally what they are, but I'm not saying that in, in a bad way. Um, we know that plants produce certain defense molecules to protect themselves from them being eaten. Um, they produce things like salicylates and oxalates and histamine, uh, lectins, various things that um, are not very good for the um, creatures that are consuming them. And indeed, you know, you take certain like little bugs and smaller critters and they, you know, eat a spinach leaf and the oxalates that are high in spinach, like to my understanding, literally shred out, shred the insides of those bugs. So the bugs have evolved to know like, hey, better not eat spinach. Although some bugs I'm sure have evolved mechanisms to counteract to those oxalates. And so they, the spinach still gets eaten, but it's really just everything wants to live. You know, we we certainly, you know, um, think of, we, we tend to anthropomorphize like animals and things like that because they're so cute and cuddly. We, we love our pigs and cows, and especially when they're babies and all of that. Um, but at the end of the day, plants don't want to die either. Um, it's not like the spinach is like, aha, I'm so glad I'm growing big and strong so somebody can come along and eat me. Um, but they don't have faces, so it's a little bit easier to uh, wrap our heads around maybe eating animal uh, or um, eating uh, vegetable matter. But uh, the reality of it is that everything that's alive wants to stay alive and grow. Um, the one exception one could argue is fruit um, because there are benefits to the plant if the animal eats the fruit and then deposits the waste and the seeds are in the fruit then hopefully another fruit tree will grow off somewhere along the way but uh, generally speaking like the leaves and roots and things like that the tubers and whatnot from different plants don't want to be eaten um, so they these plants produce these defense chemicals and uh, or molecules not chemicals and um, and they're they're toxic to certain critters um, it turns out that some humans depending on what's happening with their gut microbiome and their individual biochemistry, etc., uh, their, their genetic predispositions, some of us are susceptible to the effects of those plant defense molecules as well. So some people are in, intolerant to oxalates, some are intolerant to histamines, um, some are intolerant to um, uh, salicylates, etc. Um, and so as such, um, folks who are dealing with skin issues, digestive tract issues, chronic fatigue issues, pain issues, neurological issues, um, some of them feel a lot better when they remove those certain uh, food 
of defense or those plant defense molecule substances from their bodies. Um, as I've seen in practice many times, being someone who focuses primarily on treating complex chronic illnesses, um, I've had many patients with like, I just don't know what to eat. I've tried this diet, didn't really help. Tried that diet or some diets help this and some diets help that, but I haven't been able to find the perfect diet for me. I seem to react to everything. Well, sometimes going uh, doing a trial of a carnivore diet is a really good choice because it's ultimately the, in my opinion, it's really the ultimate hypoallergenic diet. Um, it's, it's a diet that is low in all of those plant defense compounds. Um, Oh, and, and also a diet that is, you know, uh, if you've heard of a low FODMAPs diet on um, these uh, certain types of carbohydrates that are more easily turned into gas by the various microbes that are in, in the digestive tract. Well, a, uh, meat, a carnivore diet is a no FODMAPs diet. It's not low FODMAP, it is no FODMAPs. So and not only is there are there no defense molecules, but also there are no carbohydrates to speak of that the uh, microbes can ferment and turn into gas. That's why so many folks who go on a strict carnivore diet will say, oh my gosh, like, you know, I used to be bloated out to here and now like my bloating's just gone and and indeed not to get too personal but um, having been on a strict carnivore diet and worked with various permutations it's amazing the amount of lack of gas um, that's a part of the diet I mean um, I've learned and my, my understanding is that it's normal to pass a certain amount of you know top end gas and bowel gas throughout the course of the day when a person's eating strict carnivore it's like a, a zero gas for for the majority of folks who go on that type of diet because it's just so um, uh, there, there's no fermentable carbs at all for the uh, bacteria to eat. Now, there are some microorganisms that can ferment fats and, and other um, and, and proteins and whatnot, but it's it's much harder and, and less less common, shall we say. So um, I thought this was going to be a really quick video. It's uh, it's elongating here. Um, the the bottom line is that the um, carnivore diet has no vegetables on it for those various reasons. Um, and <clears throat> as I said in the previous video and, and some of the other previous videos, um, a lot of folks will, uh, not everybody, but a lot of folks will feel better when they're on a strict carnivore diet, but eventually get to the point where they feel better when they start reintroducing some foods again. And that's for various reasons. Sometimes it's because of the easier, because of the easier energy source that carbs provide for folks. That's why I'm eating more carbs because it helps with meeting my uh, fitness goals and whatnot. Um, but uh, and then some folks just seem to feel better not being on a strict carbohydrate diet for, for various other reasons. It may be because they're not eating as many organ meats and they're, so they're, they need a more diverse nutrient um, profile by from eating plant matter potentially. Um, so it just really it's kind of a, a nuanced individualized thing. Um, I'm personally, I, I, I eat some you know little bits of vegetable here and there, but um, again, where I'm taking certain uh, multivitamins and feeling really good eating the way that I'm eating um, I just haven't had any great compulsion or motivation to say oh I should definitely go back and start eating salads and eating tons of veggies as I used to once upon a time I generally feel healthier following a meat-based diet so that's what I'm doing and so far I have not been suffering for being off the veg for the most part so thank you for the question uh, if anybody has any questions on this topic or anything else just post in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as I can